Well, um, after I'd written my first book, which was about a different subject, uh, I decided that I wanted to write about cultural memory, how different groups, social groups, uh, nations or social groups or villages or large cities, how people remembered. Um, that was very clear to me. Uh, the first thing about that which was clear to me was this, that uh, although at that point, when I wrote, before I wrote my first book, on cultural memory. Not many people had written about uh, the subject, although now, a quarter of a century later, an enormous many, large number of people have written books and articles about aspects of cultural memory. At that time, it was not much written about, but those who had written about it, either explicitly or implicitly, had tended to argue that insofar as societies or cultures succeeded in transmitting memories, this was primarily by means of uh, either oral accounts, particularly, for example, in Africa, uh, or alternatively, uh, by written accounts, by texts, by books. Um, so in other words, it was by words that people remembered, according to how people thought at that time. And I thought this was a very uh, partial and rather limited uh, explanation of how it was that cultures remembered that words were less important than people actually thought. And that what was really important is uh, the actions, the practices, the customs, the traditions of the human body. What was not spoken. I think hard about that. I think very hard, for example, about the actual uh, sequence and structure of my argument, I, I, how, how I can best explain to the reader by beginning at a certain point, which will be the, the, the optimum point at which to begin the argument, to begin the explanation, and how that would lead best through certain stages, A, B, C, D, until I reach the conclusion of the argument I'm trying to persuade the reader of. And I'm all the time aware of trying, therefore, to persuade the reader uh, of what I believe myself. Uh, so I, I know bef before I start writing the book, I mean, not before I start studying the book, because I do a lot of reading and thinking and writing notes and so on before I start to write, but at the point when I start to write, when I've, I, I, I have already worked out a structure very carefully in my mind, and so I have a clear notion of the sequence of my attempted persuasion of the reader. People say about my, my work is that I, I more or less don't waste a single sentence. That I, I, everything that's in the book just has to be in the book. It's, I mean, some books written by some scholars, I really must say, contain far much more material than the reader really needs. Before I send it to a publisher, I ask two or three friends to read it. So they've already, I've already incorporated any suggestions that an intelligent person might think of to say in relation to what I want to say. So that's, that process has already been gone through before the, the editor of the press sees it. Writing my first book and writing my first, uh, first articles on other subjects, this was very, very stressful, I found. I mean, uh, to, to illustrate just how stressful it was, I, of course, concentrated as hard as I could to try and make it as good and as precise and as intelligent as I could manage. And at that time, in doing so, while I was writing my... I was concentrating emotionally so hard that my fingers used to 
perspire with sweat at the effort. This never happens now. It hasn't happened for years. Well, there was certainly one person at the beginning who was a great help. As I say, I wanted to write about um, uh, the memory of cultures. Uh, I was knew that I wanted to think about that sort of subject because it's a very, very vast subject. I knew I wanted to do that until I no longer could write books or, or was dead. And uh, so I, I read what I could of people who I th thought might help me to write the first book, you see, about how societies remember. And there's one particular French writer. He was the only one who'd written a ma anything major on the subject. Um, before I did. I don't mean a philosopher because I mean I'm I don't mean writing about memory in, in any general sense. I mean obviously uh, uh, Sigmund Freud is, uh, who I think is the greatest critical mind of the 20th century um, uh, had, had written very very profound things in my view about memory and forgetting also. But there was one, but given the dimension of society, of cultures, there was another person, not so great. You couldn't be as great as Freud. He is fantastic. But a, a very significant scholar, a Frenchman, a man called Maurice Alvax. He wrote a book in 1925 called The Social Framework of Memory. And he wrote a, a, a fascinating article on the memory of musicians. And he wrote another short book about the memory of Jerusalem among Christians. And then he wrote another book um, called The Collective Memory. So he was working on this subject for a quarter of a century. And this had a profound I influence on me. So I... Um, so he certainly, more than anyone else, stimulated me to do this. I would only add one thing, and that is that I naturally thought, well, is there anything he's left out? And uh, of course, uh, he left out the body. Don't drink too much. Uh, be responsible. Realize that writing is a discipline. It's a job. It, you might think of it, I, I, I mean, I think of it as just as much as a form of play as, as, uh, as a form of work. But uh, pianists play and cricketers play, and the point is that if you're going to be a successful pianist or if you're going to be a successful cricketer, you've got to work at it. You've got to be there doing it six hours a day, five or six hours a day. You've got to take it seriously. You've got to have the behavior of a responsible person, otherwise you won't use your talents properly. The, there are certain people who write books which they don't, they're not doing it because they want to make a career. They're, they're doing it because they passionately want to tell someone about a certain subject. And she said, well, this is so with you, you, you know, because you have this, uh, about your writing, there's a kind of urgency, but it is not to do with a career. It's just urgency about having a conversation with a reader. Um, so I would say advice. I, I, I'd only bother to give advice to people who urgently want to say something. And I'd say, only write about what you urgently want to, to, to talk about. Not about. Don't bother about anything else. Don't bother about whether there are certain fashionable topics which people are always talking about, like globalization or postmodernism. Forget it. I mean, just write about you, what you care about.